This is our final video in our web series for the CAT or Computer Application Technology Prac Exam Paper 1 for Grade 12 for the November 2022 exam paper. It's the last question. It's a question that's got a little bit of everything in it. So let's finish this off strongly. Let's get to it. The question 7 is going to incorporate a whole bunch of from all the packages. So tourism in KwaZulu-Natal contributes significantly to the economy of the country. We must open up the 7 map file, which I've done already, which is a Word document. There's a 7 map file. And they want us to insert a calculation in the table to determine the percentage of KwaZulu-Natal's contribution to tourism in South Africa. So let's look. There's a table and we want to insert a formula into that block. So we're going to come here to the table layout and you'll see there's a formula option. So we're going to click on formula. So what do we want formula to be? Insert a calculation to determine the percentage of KwaZulu-Natal's contribution to tourism. The sum of the above will add all those values together and that all will equal to 100. So basically if we take that sum of above, I'm actually say 100 minus the sum of the above because that'll be whatever's left over. Because those are all percentages if you look there. If you add all of them together, it'll equal to 100. So the missing one would be 100 minus all of these, which we already sum in the above. So we're going to do that. And let's click OK and see what it does. Boom. So 14.8% would be KwaZulu-Natal. When you click on it, you see it goes gray. So that you know that it's a calculation. You can't just enter in the answer. You've got to use a formula under layout. So there we go. There's the two marks. Now insert the value of the contribution of KwaZulu-Natal in the text box provided. Format and position the text box to resemble the screenshot. So we want it to look like that. So we just have to input the value, which you can see was 14.8%. Eight. Now we're going to move that text box to KwaZulu Natal and we're going to like angle it a little bit, rotate it a little bit. I don't think they actually give us a value. So as long as it's rotated slightly, it should be fine. So you can see that it's rotated slightly. Maybe move it a little bit more up. And we don't want that blocks line to be seen. We don't want to see the blocks line. So when I click on it, I'm going to go to shape format. And I'm going to say there is no shape outline. Say no outline. So it looks something along those lines. So there we go. You can adjust the rotation of it if you want to get a nice value. I don't think they mention what the rotation is. But we can just use and get an idea of what it's going to be. So there we go. So I think that one is done. Let's go look at the next question. So we save and close that we've done now we're going to move to the database so make sure that you regularly save and now we're going to move to the database which i've opened already and we want to import the seven travelers spreadsheet as a linked table named info into this database set the first row to appear as column headings that's all the information they give us so we're going to import that spreadsheet so it's come over here we're going to come to external data and we're going to import over here from a particular Excel file. So I would say from Excel file, because if I remember correctly, it said a spreadsheet, so seven travelers. So let's go find that file. So there's all the files in the folder that are spreadsheets. You can change it over there if you want. We want the seven travelers one. That's the one that we want. We're going to open that as our import file. And they also specified that it must be called info and it must be a linked table. So when you see these options, you can see link to the data source. So we can say as a linked table. And when I click OK, we want the first row to be column headings because that's what they said. You see, you say the row to appear as column headings. Let's go next. And what does the link table name? It must be info. So we want it to be info. So that's correct. So we're going to go finish. Click OK. Boom. And there's our linked file, which means if we make changes to that spreadsheet, it'll make changes to this file as well. So there we go. So that's all we really had to do. Three marks. I think it's for the spreadsheet, making sure that it's linked and making sure that the name is correct. I think that's fine. I think that's all we have to do for the spreadsheet. And then let's move on to, to 7.3. Open the seven big file spreadsheet, which I've got over here. Uh, the traveling agency is running a competition to promote awareness of the big five animals. As tourists see the animals within the week, it is recorded in B2 to H7. B2 to H7, there you can see what animals are recorded in the week. Each animal can be recorded only once during the week. Determine whether a tourist has seen all the big five animals at the end of the week by using the following steps. They even give me the steps. The data in cells R2 to 07 will indicate whether each animal was seen as part of the big five or not. Use an OR function, not an F statement, in cell M2 to determine whether the animal in cell F2 is a big five animal or not. Copy the function down to all the cells. Use a formula in P3 to determine whether that person saw all big five animals. So let's see what we can do here. 
So that's quite complicated. So let's have a look. So we're going to come over here. So the first thing they tell us is that these cells tell us whether that animal is one of the big five or not. So you can see lion is one of the big five. There's a list of the big five. Rhino is a big five. I don't know what that is. I, don't I suppose that's supposed to be hyena. Hyena is not one of the big five. So that's why it's a false. So they want us to use an or function in M2 to determine whether the animal in F2 is a big five or not copy the function down to so m2 referring to f2 so we're going to put a formula in there to see if that is one of the big five and we're going to use an or function so a true or false or is used in if statements because it returns true or false so if you use an or just like it is it's going to return a true or false option now you can do lots of tests here you could say there's, there's a long way of doing it in a short way you could say if that is equal to to that or if that is equal to that or if that is equal to that so you can do each check if you want to do manually that's one way to do it it's very annoying to do each one individually so what you are doing is you're saying if f2 is equal to that one or if it's equal to that one if one of those are true the whole thing will be true just take note if you do do it like that you would want those values to stay the same. So you would want them to be dollar signs for the B values. So that when you copy it down, it will work. So there it says true because Buffalo is one of them. And if I copy it down now, it'll work for all of them. So you will see here, Hippo is not one of the big five. So that's false. And Monkey is not one big five. That's one way of doing it. There's actually another way. I'm going to show you another way. You could actually say or. What's nice is you can actually say if F2 is equal and you give it a whole bunch of options. You can say that whole group over there and then you close bracket but again i would make sure that you put dollar signs around those that when you copy them that they work so that's another way of doing it so let's copy that down and you see you get the exact same answer so both of those work very nicely so that's how we use an or or just returns true or false and that's what we've got over here so we've done that part where we used an or function to determine if it's a big five or not we've got that copy it down now use a formula in p3 to determine whether that person saw all big five animals now take note that animals each animal was only recorded once during the week so that's going to help us a little bit here so if we come here we want this person to find out if they saw all five of the big five so if i come here for true you can see they saw elephant leopard rhino buffalo and lion so they did see all the big five where this person saw lion rhino buffalo and leopard they did not however see an elephant so that's why they didn't see all five that's why it's false so we want to put a formula in there to determine if they saw all of them now we've got trues here to say if they found one of the big five and how do we know that they got all the big five well they only appear once so there should be five trues here or in your line if you saw all five let's test it that one's true there's a one two three four five yeah so there should be five trues so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to say equals count if and we want to count in this row for this person how many trues there are so i'm going to put so that's the range and what am i looking for i'm looking for the word true like it is so if i was count how many trues there were so there are five trues but how do i make that into a false well i just need to make this into a question and you can use an if statement if you want to so say if it's equal so you can say equals if this is equal to five then you can say the text true just like it is or you can say the word false so that would work or to be honest you can actually just do the statement like that equals count if and you say equals true it's going to, you're basically asking is count if count number of trues in that range equal to five if it's true it'll be true if it's not it'll be false so that should work for that i think that's all you need to do there were lots of ways of doing this you could have done either one and i think that's it that's all seven marks i think that's all done okay great that's the question paper done i hope you did well hope you were able to do it in time and i hope this video series has helped you prepare for your exams for more exam papers, go to our playlist tab, click on that subscribe button to support the channel and leave a like or comment because we'd love to hear from you. Also check out our computer terms channel for theory videos that can help you as well. And remember, don't do it the long way, do it the Mr. Long Way.